Amen. You agree with that? Say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. It's something how uh, God chooses to use uh, frail vessels. Amen. Amen. We're definitely not perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But the scripture says God has put these treasures in earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And we understand that Jesus is the head of the body. Uh huh. Thank you, But he's ascended into the heavens. He's now sitting on the right hand of the Father as intercessor. Amen. And he's depending on his body to do what he said. Amen. How many. <laughs> Believing that when you have a thought for your arm to reach out and get something, it's going to obey you. Can you say amen? Yeah. The Lord, likewise, he's believing in looking for the arms to move when he said move. And his feet to carry him where he needs to go. He's looking for that voice to speak in his behalf. On his behalf. Can you say amen? Now, the Lord here, uh -huh. uh, so it was necessary uh, to do something special. Yeah. It was now time to attract the attention of the people. Mm -hmm. So he reached down and healed a single man. Yeah. A man whom everyone knew Amen. in the community <clears throat> and, and, and filled the man with, with so and, and filled the man the man was so full of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that he just went wild with excitement yeah. mm -hmm. you've been excited about something yeah. you just yeah. didn't care what see, people thought about your actions and your way he was uh, praising God or whatever the situation was. <laughs> he was filled with joy. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And so, listen, such a miracle in behavior naturally attracted the attention of the people. Uh -huh. yeah. Folks so they're excited what in the world's going on. Yeah. And, and consider, the miracle was more than just a miracle. Yeah. It was a sign. Yes. It was a demonstration I want to say at least two things. First of all, Jesus is alive. Amen. His power is just as active upon earth today as it, as it was when he walked the shores of Galilee. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus is now working through his followers. Amen. How many followers does he have here today? Lift your hand. Hallelujah. He's working through you. He chooses to work through you. Amen. And those of you that be silent, you are doing no favors. That's right. Hello? Amen. I'll tell you again, this, the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Sound mind. Amen. If God have done anything for you, you ought to tell somebody. Amen. Amen. Uh, so he reaches out to save and heal the world. His followers are now his instruments. His emissaries, if you will. His ambassadors. His representatives. That's what you are. You are his messenger. Thank you, Jesus. And some say, I'm not a preacher. Well, you should be a witness. A witness to the world. Amen. The world that's lost and suffering. Yes. And, and that's death and sin and shame. You ought to be a witness. Uh, in this first recorded miracle Amen. of the church. God is demonstrating his power. Thank you Jesus. And bearing witness through his followers. In 
In doing so, he has given us some of the greatest lessons on witnessing to be found in a place. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, we see Jesus is now working through his disciples. We can see that as we read the scripture. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, this is one time or one thing Jesus want the people to know. Again, his presence and his power are still is still at work. You know, they hung Jesus on the cross. They crucified him. They uh, and they crowned his head with thorns. They put him in the tomb. But on the third day, he rose again from the dead. Thank you, Lord. And the, the disciples right there with uh, the Bible say above five hundred people at one time saw him ascend back into the heavens. Yes. So everybody didn't see that, but there was some chosen few. Mm -hmm. So. Everybody don't know about his presence, but we know. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As the was saying just a few moments ago, I know the Lord Amen. laid his hands on me. Yes. So when you think about his presence and his power are still at work. Mm -hmm. His presence and power is still available to men. Amen. Hallelujah. His great love and concern for the world is still being manifested Amen. through the lives of his disciples. I want to tell you when the Lord show up, he will manifest himself. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, know that somebody say, when the Lord show up, when the Lord show up, he will manifest himself. Will manifest himself. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Listen. Uh, in fact, Jesus has no feet but our feet. Mm. He has no hands but our hands. Yeah. When you think about it, he has no voice but our voice. Mm. If we do not go and do and speak the work of God, yeah. his work does not get done. Yeah. Glory to God. Consider four significant lessons here. First of all, Jesus worked through those who are faithful in prayer. Amen. Have you developed a prayer life? Many of you are not praying the way you should be praying. That's why you're intimidated when the enemy approach. Because prayer will give you a boldness. It'll give you energy. Amen. It'll give you confidence. Yes, will. Like we're talking about David this morning. If some people don't see the value of Sunday school, you need to come on out. Amen. You'll learn some things. Yes, Glory to God. <laughs> talking about the faith of David this morning. Amen. Great teacher, an anointed teacher. Thank God. Hallelujah. Make your way to Sunday school. Get up. You know Sunday's coming. You got seven days to plan. To get up here on Sunday morning. Amen. And sometimes you have to work on Sunday morning. You get up at five or six. Sure Amen. We don't start the service here till 11. Amen. Sunday school 945. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Come on out. Yes. And let the Lord bless you real good. Amen. I just don't know I can get up that early. <laughs> you can't get up at all if God don't touch you. Uh-oh. Amen. It's so, it's so. You need to think about who's giving you the opportunity Amen. to get up. Amen. I had to have my breakfast. If God didn't give you the strength, yes. the appetite, you could eat your breakfast. Amen. You to come on out and give God praise. Yes. Someone said, Jesus made me who I am. Who I am. And I'm nothing but a child of God. So let me ask, how many years had this man been sitting begging? He had been a cripple for over 40 years. 40 years or more a cripple from birth, never having walked 
a single step. Had he been carried for 10 years or 20 years? Had he been carried for 40 years? We, uh, we are not told, but no doubt he had been a beggar for years and years. And everyone knew his case. Verse 10 says, and they knew, they knew, the community knew that it was he who sat for arms. Where if you can give it. But was he sitting at the beautiful gate of the temple? And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Amen. So, the picture, picture the man, picture this man as a helpless cripple. He was poor, unable to work, having to fend for himself, being ignored, uh, never fitting in with no one to take him in and help. Never being accepted. And, and also being without family. Yes, yes. Family is important. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. amen. <clears throat> Some people don't have much sense. They just walk off and leave the family. <laughs> Not realizing one day you might need a hand. And uh, you might need somebody to help you. Amen. Consider he was not even looking up at Peter and John when he asked for arms. Been begging so long, he just had to pay an arm. I can just imagine. Arms for the poor. Arms for the poor. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he wasn't looking up. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the point is, this man was hurting. Within as well as without. He was living, he was a living picture of so many in the world. A person who, who uh, persons who are wounded and suffering so much from the neglect of men, from unconcern and selfish. And, and uh, selfishness of the world Amen. from a world that will not let go and share what it has with those who have uh, those who do not have I know there have been many times we've helped people and you're trying to help people and sometimes they do you wrong mm -hmm. and they when they do you wrong that is another opportunity for the devil to step in and see. You see? You can't help people. But the devil's a liar. Yes, the Lord, through the scripture, the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. So you might have been hurt by giving and helping somebody, but that do not let that stop your spirit of compassion. Don't let it seal up your heart of compassion. Amen. Give anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is Glorified by your giving. Hallelujah. And he will not forget you, you for a humble heart, yes. a compassionate heart. Amen. It's so easy. Right? People take your stuff, walk off. Mm. Don't look back. You try to be a blessing to them. Like, why did they do that? Amen. Don't worry about it. Amen. Just keep praising God. Yes. If God give you the opportunity, bless somebody else. Amen. That's right. I say, can't tell you. And I say many times when people ask for money, don't even look for it back. That's right. If they love God, they'll give it back when they can. Amen. But if they can't, just count the blessing. It's a soul to see. If you can't do it, then hold on to your money. Hold on to your money. That's it. Because you hinder yourself. That's right. You get so mic, you get so upset and angry and tight lipped. I'm not giving nobody a dime. <laughs> that's on you. You the one that's saying you say. Uh -huh. You the servant of the Lord. You're the ambassador. 
You can't shut your, you can't close up your heart of compassion Amen. because somebody mistreated you, yeah. did you wrong. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Amen. So persons who are suffering so much from the, the, the neglect of God's people, the very people who profess to know the love and care of God, yet who act just like unconcerned and selfish people that hoard everything for themselves. There ought to be a difference. Did not the Lord say through the word, greater is he that is in you than he's in the world? God will give you strength to get over that. He, you're not suffering because of what was done. You didn't like what they did or was slapped in the face, but God had given you more. Amen. He wouldn't let you miss that. Glory Don't go on. That's right. Go on with it. That's right, Bishop. Say Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The need, the needs exist and abound. Amen. Tell somebody the needs, the needs. exist Amen. and abound. Amen. They are all around us. People hurting everywhere. And what if we shut up our bowels of compassion My Lord. because we didn't hurt, mm. because somebody didn't follow through with That's the devil. Amen. It's okay. Y'all a little quiet, but it's all right. I know I'm talking right in here. Yes, Jesus <laughs> can work through, Jesus can only work through the people who see the desperate needs of hurting men, Amen. of hurting humanity. He can use those. He can work through you. Mm -hmm. If you have a heart to reach out and help somebody. Can you say amen? Amen. And you know, because you've been hurt before, you're going to be, you're going to use wisdom. <laughs> you're going to use wisdom. Yes, sir. You won't be made as liberal. <laughs> you're going to give it. You're going to give it, but you're going to like, I'm going to use wisdom with this. I'm not just going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> but another one will just stick in your pocket and walk on back there and say thank you. Shame on you. <laughs> Listen, Jesus works through those who uh, fasten their eyes upon the need. It is not enough just to see the desperate needs of the world. That's just not enough. I mean, it's not enough just to see a person hurting and suffering. Like there's a place in the scripture, I think James says, if somebody if see someone in, in need and say, well, be warm and feel, may God bless you. I mean, it takes more than that. Amen. 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 So, uh, uh, so a person, you, you must stop and fasten your eyes upon the need. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, the, the word here, fasten, it means fixed attention. Amen. Uh, in, uh, in earnest, it's an intense glaze, mm -hmm. a gaze, uh, a continuous, steadfast attention. Uh, it is seeing the need and focusing upon it. It is continuing to focus one's sight. Amen. 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 Your concern, your attention, Upon meeting the needs until it is met. Praise God. When God brings you across the path of someone, amen, they don't want you to do something about that. He's going to help you. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So Peter looked and saw the man in need and would not look away. Hallelujah. Some of you see there have been scammers. And I've been driving out in the highway. I've seen people. I know there are scammers out there. Yeah. So I'm not ignorant yeah. to that. Yeah. I, I saw this person. I saw this my own. I was sitting there like, this person was standing with a sign. God bless you. And they, you know, all the help you. Whatever. Oh, you know what they have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A car pulled up by four or five people and he took his sign and walked over and another got up and took his place. They were changing shifts. Oh, I said, my Lord. It don't take much to know that. Hey, these are crooks. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? How you gonna change shifts? Your turn. <laughs> it's your turn. 
<laughs> this is your turn to stand beside them. And this guy, right, pretty nice looking car. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, two or three more sitting up in there. I said, Lord have mercy. So that, no doubt they were spotting the different areas, you know. Because I've noticed, I wonder how can this fellow get from this block and this side of town over here. And I'm like, I saw you. Something going on. But anyway, Peter looked and saw the man in need and, and would not look away. He, let me say, he could have looked away and just passed by the man. Amen. Isn't that right? Sometimes God connects you with somebody and you can't just pass by. Uh, you know, that's why you got to be sensitive to the spirit of Christ. Amen. Even though you've been taken advantage of so many times, but yet you got to stay sensitive mm -hmm. to the spirit of Christ. Amen. And when you're sensitive, you can move by the power of God. Mm -hmm. We say be led by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You see, most people did, but not Peter. Most people just went around by. Amen. But Peter didn't. Mm -hmm. He was now indwelt. By the Spirit of God, and He was that, uh, he, and He was on earth to meet the needs. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are the ones on earth for the Lord. Yeah. Therefore, He fastened His attention upon the man, and being filled and being full of concern and compassion, yeah. uh, the great need. Of the hour is to see the needs of the world and to fix it. Our attention upon them. Fix our attention upon them. That's what I'm trying to say. You see, Jesus, through those who reach out to help, those who reach out to meet the needs, it is not enough, again, to see the needs of the world is not enough to fasten our eyes and our attention on the world. Just seeing and being concerned over the needs of the world does not meet the needs. Peter acted. Somebody say Peter acted. In fact, he did something dramatic. The need existed. It was there. He knew the Lord cared. How I many know that God cares? And he was the representative of the Lord. He was up to him. It was up to him. It was up to him. It was up to him. To show the Lord's care. Thank you, Jesus. It's up to us. Amen. To show the Lord's care. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. When God allows us to be in certain situations, and God allow us to see a situation, then it ought to be a compassion in us to care enough to move in that situation, mm -hmm. to do something about it. Amen. If the person or people will allow us, we will help them. Amen. But when people reject your help, there's nothing you can do. Amen. And their blood is not on your hand. Amen. You did what you could do. Amen. Isn't that right? Glory to God. So, the words Peter demonstrated that he had a sure confidence that he himself belonged to God. Mm -hmm. He was God's representative. How many have that confidence that you belong to God? Oh, yes. And yet, you have confidence all, even the more that you belong to him. And you have an intimate relationship, so when he speaks, you hear. Hallelujah. It made me think about just a few moments ago. We didn't have the service as usual. So those, thank God for those on Zoom, thank God for those on Facebook, but they couldn't be a part of that. Can you say amen? The way God directed us. Would you bless? Hallelujah. The words that people, the words that Peter demonstrated that he had a, a sure confidence. That he himself belonged to God. Amen. He was God's representative. Another thing. He had a plan to help the man. Amen. You got to have a plan. Amen. Tell you that you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. I mean you can't just go in this situation and start. Let me put you out and have a plan. Think about it. Right. Glory to God. He had, he had an ex expectancy. 
a genuine faith that God would help him to meet the need. Mm -hmm. Many times uh, people come to us and say, would you pray for me? And, and, and some of us, uh, we, we, we so full of ourselves. All right, let's pray. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you don't you know you have to move into his presence? Yes. So-called tight seeker. And in order for God to move, I don't care how urgent the situation is, if you don't take God to take time to move in God's presence, uh -huh. nothing will happen. What you say? You have to move into his presence. Amen. Well, how do I do that? A good way is to meditate. Amen. When I'm out my seek and they take is I'm meditating on him. I'm moving. So, so. Um, and I'm not like in that meditation, there's a visitation. Yes, sir. Yeah, you come on yeah, no, like, And when I get there in his presence, then I'm able to tell him what I want. Amen. That's why I love that old song that we sang years ago. Jesus is on the main line. Call him up. Tell him what you want. See, so when you begin to meditate, you're moving toward him. I say, KK. You come on, I see another step. I lost it. When you move him and you meditate, and when you get into his presence, now there's a visitation there, right? Jesus. Yeah, 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 and in that visit, you can begin to tell him what you want. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you see the presence of God. Hallelujah. Now I want you to know when, when God shows up, Hallelujah. he will manifest himself. Tell somebody, when God shows up, when God shows up, He will, He will manifest Himself. Manifest Himself. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So He had a willingness to act, to reach out by faith and meet the need. Now, see, I'm gonna give you something to think about. All this is essential if we are to reach out in prayer, in the power of prayer, to meet the needs of the world. Amen. In fact, the needs of the world will be met Amen. only, tell somebody only, only, as we are confident that we ourselves belong to God, that we are his representatives upon earth. Yeah. Only as we think and plan how to meet the need. My God. My God. Only as we are expected believing God will meet the need through us. Amen. You gotta believe God gonna use you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, only as we are willing to act, step out by faith, to meet the need. Amen. The Lord taught. Say not ye. There are four months. And then cometh harvest. Behold I say unto you. Lift up your eyes. And look on the fields. For they are white already to harvest. John 4.35. Can you say amen? Uh, another place he says I have shown you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord God the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive can you say amen again? Amen. That's in Acts 20 and 35. You take your notes. Listen. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Amen. And not to plead ourselves. Amen. Some of us, we, the enemy has us in a, a place where the only, only thing we can do is complain. But you can look. You can look at your situation, yeah. no matter how devastating it is, and see someone else in a worse situation. Yeah, that's true, Bishop. 
That's and for that, you ought to tell God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We was talking about, even on this a little bit this morning, how the odds can be against you. Yes. And you can be facing a giant. Yes. But when you have your confidence in God, thank you, Lord. And not yourself. Yes. I say, can't tell you. Because you're on the Lord's side, yes. you're a winner. Hallelujah. Because you're on the Lord's side, God will provide victory for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll walk away and say, I'm walking yes. over on victory side. Hallelujah. Yes, say, can tell you. Yes. Come on, my seat. Glory, glory, glory. So bear ye one another's burdens yes. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Y'all look, bear one another's burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to look beyond family. Right. Amen. See someone else in need. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to help somebody. Uh -huh. Because the way somebody else treated you in your last uh, mm -hmm. encounter. Yes. Uh -huh. Don't close up your bowels of compassion. Uh -huh. Don't you do it. Amen. God has been good to you. He's been too good to you. Amen. Too good. Amen. So continue to give. Thank it's you. God's way. Tell them, it's God's way. It's God's way. He says, His thoughts are not like our thoughts. His way is not like our ways. We got to depend on Him. Thank you, Lord. We're depending on God. Uh, in Acts 3, verse 6, 7, and 8, declares, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I known. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ride up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet in anchor bones received strength. And he Leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. What was he doing? Walking and leaping and praising God. Glory to God. See, Jesus is alive. Tell somebody, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. No one can do that but Christ. Men have never walked in his life. Born crippled. Not only is he alive, but his presence and power are still active upon earth. This is the most important thing God wants people to know. His son, Jesus Christ, tells him he's alive. Christ. Tell somebody he's alive. He's alive. He's, alive. he's not dead. Amen. Having passed from the scene of old of world history, he's alive. Amen. And exhorted to the right hand of the Father. Yes. How long? Shall forever. 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 Listen, his presence and power are still active upon the earth. And will continue to be active in the lives of his true followers. I want to mention how many true followers do you have here today? How many true followers? He's alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God in his true followers. Until he returns, listen, his power is still active, his power is still available. To men. Amen. He still loves and is still greatly concerned for the world mm -hmm. and for every person that is in the world. I want you to know that Christ loves you. Amen. He's concerned about you and your situation. Thank you, Lord. He's concerned about what you're going through. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But note that these things. Jesus' presence. And power are not found in silver and gold. Mm -hmm. You notice what Peter had no silver, 
No gold. No money. Or material goods. No food. Or clothes. <laughs> they didn't even have a house or shelter for the men. No social or community service. Therefore, Peter could not could not give those things to the man. But note, it was such things that the man wanted and expected. And it was what the man seemed to need in the eyes of the world. You see, man looks on the outward appearance. But God, hallelujah, looks on the heart. Thank you, Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. However, it was not what the man needed. It was not the basic need of the man. The man needed to be changed. Amen. How? Both within and without. Amen. How many know when God does the work, he does it on the inside and out? And out. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. If he was changed physically, and spiritually, he would be able to walk and be motivated to work. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? When God looked at the man, he saw the man's spiritual need and his spiritual need. Therefore, God's concern was to cure and change the man completely. I want you to know that God was out to take care of the whole man. How many know God is interested in the whole man? The whole man. So called I seek. And the answer to the changing, the whole man was not found in silver and gold. Hallelujah. Think about this. The necessities of life are just what things that are necessary to life. Mm -hmm. The necessities of life are just that. Things that are necessary to life. But having the necessities of life are not the basic need of man. Do you get it? Man's spiritual welfare is his basic need. If his spirit is right, he's right with God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. If his spirit is wrong, he's at odds with God. Amen. <laughs> if his motives is strong, he is strong. If his motives are weak, he's weak. What God is after is to change man by making man completely whole. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So that man can be productive, Amen. fulfilled, and fulfill his purpose in the world and make uh, the con contributions he is supposed to make. Amen. Some people are so lost and messed up, they haven't even thought about what's my purpose? Amen. Why am I here? If you think about it, there have been people that, oh, it doesn't matter how old you are now. Some people, with your, the younger than you have gone. But I say, you call me like, you are still here. So what's your purpose? Why have God kept you? What are you supposed to be doing? Have you thought about it? Have you call me like seeker, been intimate enough with God for you to share? He can show you. Reveal to you yes. who you are. Yes. Some of you don't know who you are. Right. When you find out who you are, you'll stop running from the devil. Amen. You'll stand flat foot and say, I'm, I'm safe. Yes. And the devil keep running his mouth. You say, I bind you. Yes. Come on. Yes. Take that yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Don't forget that name. Yes. Huh? Hallelujah. You can't do it within your own strength. Yes. David just a little shepherd boy. He said, when he heard all that coming out of his mouth, what he going to do? 
How boastfully was he said, okay, oh, don't worry about it. Amen. I'll take care of it. Amen. You just a boy. You never fought. He said, I'll come in the name of the Lord. That's yes. it. That's what it's all about. You got to come in the name of the Lord. Name of the Lord. Those that say I'm not quite ready yet. What you waiting on? Come, my sacred. Come unto him. That he may prepare you to do a work. Why are you in earth's atmosphere? Fulfill his purpose in the world. And make the contributions you're supposed to make. God is concerned with whatever it is. Whether it be spiritual or physical. That keeps a man from knowing him personally Amen. and from fulfilling his purpose on earth. You see, Jesus' presence and power are found in Jesus' name. Tell somebody, Jesus' presence, Jesus presence and, power and power are found in Jesus' name. Are found in Jesus' name. Yes, see. Jesus' presence and power are still at work. And some preachers, that's what aggravates me. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't believe in working miracles, but Jesus is still working. He's working miracles. And in meetings, he's still meeting the needs of the people. Notice this. Peter reached down to take the man by the right hand and lift him up. He gonna, let's look at this, look at this. What faith it takes for you to do that? The man have never walked before in his life. My God. Born crippled. But he reached out his hand and take it from, lift him up. What faith? And then I believe because God had put his authority in Peter's word. It activated a trust yes. in this man. Yes. Come on. He reached back up. It's all right. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Can I use my imagination? Yes. Say, can yes. yes. The man let him. And I said, we're trusted. And then not only that, when we see a faith and trust, it brings forth power. Yes. Because when Peter reached down, the man reached up. We see the faith, we see the trust. Yes. So Jesus healed him. That brought about the power. Yes. Can you say that? Somebody say, what power? What, what power? power? Oh my God. Uh, <coughs> Glory to God. When, when God put his authority in your words, you, people Jesus. stop Amen. and pay attention. Amen. Uh, it, it, it caused something to stir in the heart. And they're moved by the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Ordinarily, they wouldn't pay any attention. Amen. But because God has put his authority yeah. in your word. Hallelujah. Take care. People are paying attention. Glory to God. Right. They want to hear what you got to say. Yes. I say, take mm -hmm. And the devil don't want you to realize that. So he try to downplay what you're doing. But the Lord showed me. Yeah. We're expecting great things yeah. in 2023. Yeah. Even though we couldn't see the physical evidence, we let just a few people give a testimony. And oh my God. We can see what the Lord has been pouring out. His spirit. And everybody didn't testify. And some had great testimonies. Can you say amen? In God's time, you're going to tell. Yes, right. If you're really of God, you're going to tell somebody. Go over to God. How can you hold it back? Hallelujah. The songwriter said, I wasn't going to tell nobody. Yes. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it to myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to tell somebody. Yes. It's just like the prophet Jeremiah. He got aggravated because the Lord allowed him to be locked up. Yes. It's like I'm not saying anything else for God. But then he said he could hold his peace. He said it was just like fire. Yes. Shut up in my bones. 
Let's open his mouth and tell somebody how good God is. Mm -hmm. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So how much we need to trust Jesus? How much we need to trust his presence and power? Think about it. How much we need to quit questioning and answering and arguing over whether or not we still have the right to call upon Jesus' name. Glory to God. People talking uh, doubt and can't believe God. You mean uh, excuse yourself. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just get off around them. That's right. You see, over whether or not we can still trust his presence and power, it's time to trust Jesus. Uh, it's time to believe him. His love and care for the suffering and lost souls of the world. It is time to go forth in the full presence and power of the Lord. Who is alive. Somebody shout alive. alive. Whose presence and power are still available for earth. Amen. Are you here? Thank you, Jesus. His presence and his power is available for you. Hallelujah. Praise Glory to God. It is written, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. if you have faith as, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence mm -hmm. to yonder place, Hallelujah. and it shall remove, yes. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. Again, the Bible says, and whatsoever you shall ask in the name, in my name, yes. that will I do. Yes. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. What more could he do? Mm. Glory to God. You see, the man was completely changed. His whole being, his attitude, and life. How many know when God touched you? Yes, Lord. When the Lord transformed your life, you're completely changed. Amen. You're not patched up. Amen. Amen. You're new. That's right. Amen. You've been reconciled. Yes, you have a seat at the table Amen. of the family of God. I say, can tell you, his whole being, his attitude in life, he was no more shy mm -hmm. and revealed embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Some of you stupid, you, you're too shy. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you, you know God's army now, you put that away. Come on. When you was in the world, you weren't shy and shaking your behind. Oh, and you be before everybody, you didn't strange. It could be strange, anybody. <laughs> you thought you had to go on. Right. Now you come in the house of the Lord, now you, right. you need to say something. Right. Tell the Lord, thank you. For saving me. Yes. If he saved you, that means he rescued you. He snatched you out. Yes, he did. Some of you in darkness didn't know what was going on. God cut the light on for you. We didn't see what was happening. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I know it was like that. God let you see the mess you was in. How do you ever go seek him? If you had any, any, any sense, you flee for your life. Come on. Can you say, and don't stop now. Mm -hmm. Keep on running for the Come for on. your life. Mm -hmm. I mean running for Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean learn to get into his presence. Hallelujah. I mean get in his word. Hallelujah. Looking at the testimonies in the life and the history of others that have gone through. Mm -hmm. It can tell you how I made it over. Yes. So much so some make the song, how I made it over. Yes. I look back and wonder yes. how I got over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And somebody had to tell us to say it was by the grace of God. That's mm -hmm. right. It was by the grace and mercy of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the man was completely changed. Yes. He was saved and healed inside and out. Mm -hmm. His whole personality, that's what I like about the Lord, was changed. And he wanted all to know it. He was standing, he was leaping, 
He was walking. He was praising God. He wasn't like some of you. God bless you. You sit down on it. Hey, there's a fire. You're going to move you. Thank you, Jesus. Something good happened. You're going to tell it. Amen. And you're going to tell who did it for you. It was the Lord. The Lord. It was the Lord that saved. It was the Lord that brought me out. If it had not been for God on my side, I would have lost my life. Amen. But this man, thank God, he expressed himself, not like something. You want to try to be said, did he? Man, God hasn't done something for you. What's wrong with you? Come out of that place. Come on, Bishop. He was standing. He stood up. Yeah, yes. He was walking. He was leaping. Hallelujah. He wasn't ashamed. He wasn't embarrassed. And I take this is just no charge. He had to go to practice. Nobody had to teach him how to do that. <laughs> he would move by the power. There's a difference between move by the power of God and then come and rehearse that skip. Oh, no. Don't like it. Don't care whether you like it or not. It's the truth. In my conclusion, <laughs> the result were twofold. The people knew the man and had been turned and had been truly healed. I say the people knew the man had been truly healed. People that know you, when you surrender your life to Christ, you don't have to tell them anything. They're going to see the change. See the change. They know that you've been born again. Amen. You got to walk around with a sign up here. I'm saved now. <laughs> I've been changed. Your life would show the difference. Your attitude. Amen. Somebody say a little sharp something to you. You know how you used to snap back? Yes, sir. Wait a minute now. All right. Your attitude will change. <laughs> yeah. You take things differently. <laughs> you yep. the handle. I'm not trying to pray anything there, but it's in the hands of the Lord. It's on you, right? Yes, Amen. Amen. Listen. The people knew the man had been truly healed. Glory. Uh, they had seen the man for years, sitting as a cripple and begging for help. There could be no question about the miracle. They were filled with wonder and amazement at the change. At that which had happened unto him. And they were attracted wondering and waiting to see what had caused his miracle. Do you not know you can live a life so people be attracted to you? They're like, I just want to be around. I don't know what it is. It's the spirit of Christ. It's not because you're beautiful. It's not because you're handsome. It's not because you have such a great physique. You know, or shape or whatever it is. It's the presence. The presence of the Lord. So called Tyson. You come. It's the presence of the Lord. That's why they want to be around you. That's why they want to talk to you. Amen. Amen. Just want to talk. I think I had a little something on my mind. Yeah, you want to know. Amen. And if you humble yourself, God will give you the answer. Amen. Amen. God will hear and answer your prayer. Yeah. Why? Because you have learned how to humble yourself. Amen. Amen. A changed person, a person who is truly changed by Christ, will cause people to stand in amazement Amen. and to wonder. Yes. Because they, they, they know a little of your situation. They don't know much of it, but they were a little. And they know, the little they know, if I was in that city, ain't no way I could make it. I don't know how they're making it. Amen. It's the power and presence of Christ. Yes. Can you say Amen. Amen. Listen, a changed person will stir people to desire the same miracle. Amen. I want that, what you have. I don't yes. want it, but I want it. Amen. <laughs> you ever heard somebody say that? Yes. Yes. And to their own lives or in the lives of some loved one. Yes. You know, listen, what, what the Lord is saying. Let your light so shine before men. 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. You ought to have fruit. Amen. Hello? Amen. Glory to God. Not, not, I go to church every Sunday, but through the week we see you. Oh, Bob, thank, thank God my son to get here. <laughs> God, then, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Eh? On Monday, what you say? You give me a Something wrong with that like man. Listen, I understand that there are 25 life, 25 watt bulbs. There are 50 watts, 75 watts, 100 watts. All kind of watts, right? But some Christians, I believe, they only show them 15 watts. Oh, and you try to go through the dark with 15 watts. Oh, <laughs> you just might be blind. blind. I'm not going to say you're not saved, but my goodness. You brighten up your light. <laughs> you brighten up your light. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, we must live a life of intimacy. And let me tell you, this how the intimacy comes. It comes through prayer. So thank God for prayer warriors. Yes. Amen. When you uh, began to pray, seek it in Ketaya. You began to brighten up your light. You turn it up now. Your light getting brighter now. You understand? Glory. And then there's a spirit of intimacy comes with that. Glory to God. And when you have intimacy, there are some things you can talk about that you wouldn't ordinarily talk about. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. And get answers. Mm -hmm. You know, but like we was talking about a few minutes ago, some people just blur out and start to, they say praying, but the Lord, ain't, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get, get to in his presence first. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, know, you gotta somebody, get in your presence, get in his presence first. When you get in his presence, then you can begin to tell him what's on your heart. Listen, this man that God used, these two men, Peter and John, they were faithful prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, did you, did you notice what the scripture said? It was at the ninth hour. I might say prayer time. Prayer time. Amen. They were going to, and, 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 and the man was in a position. You want to be blessed by God? They, they could have put him in front of the storefront, in front of the flea market, wherever, but they put him right there at the gate of the temple. Amen. Amen. I don't know if he had been in the church or not, but he was in front of the door. Huh? Mm. He was there at the entrance. Amen. And as God said, would come up, he said, Sit and go, have I none? Yes. But such as I have, yes. give I thee. Yes. How could he do that? Because he had a spirit of prayer. Amen. You know, you know uh, the, the Jews observed three, uh, three, three stated times of prayer. When was that? Well, it was the third hour. Somebody said nine in the morning. Nine. It, was nine six, morning. it was the sixth hour. So we just say 12 noon. Then also the ninth hour, say 3 p.m. 3 p.m. You see, the, the very fact that Peter and John was going into the temple to pray indicated that they were men of prayer. You agree? Amen. Imagine having uh, three specific times for prayer every day. Now that takes discipline. Amen. It takes a plan, you know right? Mm. I'm going to get my prayer in a minute. I'm going to get it in. Huh? I mean, you can spare a minute, can you? 60 seconds for the Lord. Amen. Hello. Amen. Oh, you can get it in. Yeah. I, I'm so busy. Keep doing that 60 seconds. My Lord. One minute. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't specify the length of time, does it? Have you, re, have you read what it specifies? The, now, now, sometimes it talks about the, the hour of prayer, but how many know you don't have to be an hour? When Peter showed in heaven hour when he was he was drowning, Lord save it. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> that, that, yeah, he didn't say, prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty yeah, impression. He did. Oh no, <laughs> Lord save it. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord stretched out his hand and pulled him up. Thank you, Jesus. And I heard somebody say, He was a fisherman. Right. He, you know he knew how to swim, yeah. but yeah. have you tried swimming in a storm? That's a my he needed help. He needed help. Amen. 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 But God will come in the midst of your storm. Yes, he will. Seek him. Yes. And he will help. He will deliver you. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, so the very fact that uh, uh, Peter and John were going into the temple yes. to pray indicated that they were men of prayer. Yes. 
Imagine having three Pacific times for prayer every day. Not just praying a while on the run. Not just praying always, always, while we uh, go about our daily affairs, uh, which is what we so often claim and use to, to, to salve uh, our conscience. Yes. Now you smooth your conscience. Yes. I pray that. I've been praying all day. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine actually having three set periods. Three concentrated times. Three prayer sessions. When we can shut the world out. You see what I'm saying? And focus solely upon God. Anyone listening? Such was the prayer life of Peter and John. And such was the reason Jesus was uh, uh, able to walk through them or work through them in meeting the desperate need, the desperate needs of the suffering men. You remember reading, and our first scripture was, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the, at the hour of prayer. Is that right? Yes. Being the ninth hour. Yes. What time was the ninth hour? 3, 3 p.m. Amen, 3 p.m. They was going to pray. Glory to God. Listen, let me give you another point before I close it all the way out. Somebody say, the name, the name Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The name. The name. It means to call upon the name. Someone means to call upon the authority. So to call upon the name of someone means to do what? To call upon the authority, the power, to call upon the office, the nature, and the character of the person. So the name or the person's name stands for all that the person is. That makes sense? I say the name or the person stands for all the person is. You see, when a king may send a decree through his kingdom, right? The decree goes out under his name and under his authority. Is that right? You take a government or business officer may send a, a, a memo throughout his department. The memo goes out under his name under his authority. So likewise, when Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk, he was proclaiming it is the name, the power, the authority, the person of Jesus Christ who will heal you. Thank you, Lord. You listen. Jesus Christ is alive. His power, his authority, his name, his person is still active upon earth. I'm just about closed. Note three critical facts about calling upon the name of Jesus Christ. First of all, it is the name or the power of Jesus that meets the need. Thank you, Lord. It is not Peter. It's not John. Mm -hmm. Nor is it the silver and gold. Right you see, silver and gold can never bring healing. Right. Not permanently. Amen. Amen. Ill health or disease, mm -hmm. accident. Eventually, catch us all. Catch us all. I mean, something, you know, something going to go wrong. You're human, right? Amen. And when it does, no amount of money is able to help. 
It is Christ alone. Tell somebody, it's Christ alone. It's Christ alone. His presence, His power that can meet our need. Yeah. It's Christ alone. Count, you can have the best insurance in the world, but they can't fix you if the Lord don't do it. It won't be done. That's right. You listen? So we need to set our affections, set our intimacy upon Christ. For it is Christ alone, his presence, his power that can meet our needs. Secondly, Peter knew that the power of Jesus dwelt within him. Christ himself and only in Christ. But he also knew that he possessed the presence and power of Christ. Matter of fact, I thought that we're all going to Somebody say, possessing the presence and the power of Christ. And again, I thought about carrying. Somebody say, carrying the presence and the presence and the power of Christ. That's what I was, I thought I was going to speak on this. Said, but it changed because I kept seeking my seal. Yeah. 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 I want to seek her because I woke up the other morning. I told my wife, I said, have you heard? What do you think about it? When God, I said, can't take it. Just walk with the thought. When God put his authority on your words. I know she felt the presence. Because you come and I seek her. When you wake up out of your sleep with that in your mind, yeah. it's God, man. It's God. Yeah. It's God. Yes, it is. And I said, well, you the first one I saw this morning, first one talking to so I'm going to share it to you. I'm going to share it with you. <laughs> Before we get our good mornings out the way and all that. I said, now nah, I had a question. What do you think about it? When God put his authority on your words, my God of mine. People stop. Yes. They listen. Yes. Oh, they expect him. Yes. There's an expectancy there. Yes. There's an urgency there. Yes. Come on with it. What you, what, tell me what you, <laughs> Yeah, I need to know what you're saying. Yes. Praise God. So uh, Peter knew that the power of Jesus Christ yes. dwelt within him. Yes. And now, now uh, uh, but he also knew that he possessed the presence and power of Christ within his body. And that he was called a representative of Christ. That would give you authority to speak and to use and to witness to people when you have a, a prayer life and, you, and you're walking in, in the power and presence of Christ. And when you come across a situation, you know you can't do it but the spirit of God that's well in you. Yes. The presence of God is in you. Yes. And you, you know who you are. So you know, yeah, let's pray. Let's see what God's going to do about this situation. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah, let's pray. Yes. Amen. But you can't use God like a Santa Claus. Now. You don't have time for him, but every once in a while, you're going, Let, let's pray by sister, sister. No, you can't do that. Come on. And then also, all of us, not just one person, but all of us, we got to come to a place where we, we mature enough where we pray for ourselves. Come on. For a while, you, you wrote on mother's prayers. Amen. And wrote on dad's prayers, if they say if, if, but, you know, that goes both ways, mother and dad. If, if they say you're out in the press. But then there come a time you have to mature where you pray for yourself. That's right. Pray for yourself. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you. And praise God. The last thing is uh, Peter acted first. That's, that's another thing. Watch this. Peter acted first. Somebody say, Peter acted first. Peter yeah, acted first. Uh, not the man. Yeah. He was just doing what he always do. Help the poor. Yeah. Um, for the poor. Yeah. So Peter initiated the conversation. Yeah. Did he not? Yeah. Peter was the Lord's representative. He was the ambassador. Isn't that right? Yeah. Jesus had no way to reach the man. Mm -hmm. Listen. He had already sent. He had a, Christ, which, what I'm saying is Christ had already ascended into heaven. Is that right? Amen. Jesus had no body, no hands, no feet, no voice upon earth except those of the men and women who he had left behind. Amen. We heard about a movie about left behind, but we're about the, we never heard about the disciples probably left behind. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? 
Christ left some disciples behind. Huh? Amen. For what purpose? To do his will. Do his will. So every time we think about we think about Hollywood and those that left behind. But Christ left some disciples behind. Amen. Are you in that number? Yes. Are you one of those? <laughs> so he's depending on us to do his will. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. If any act or work was to be done for God, they had to do it. So again, if any work that had to be done for God, we are the chosen one to do it. I mean, no, you call, you're chosen to do that work. So only what we do will get done. May I say it again? Only what we do will get done. So if we choose just to come to church on Sunday or and shout and show our, our nice suits and things and dresses and go back home to the next Sunday, that's all going to get done. Somebody got to roll the sleeves up and get, get out there and, 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 and get in the mix of the crowd. Yes. But they don't look like you. But they don't smell like you. But they don't act like you. Men don't talk like you. But we got to mix it up. The Lord gives you something to keep you while you're out there. So you ought to be full of fear. You know what? Tell somebody about the Lord. Amen. And the more you talk, the more confidence you will receive. Glory to God. And you won't be intimidated. Because they're acting crazy. They got the wrong spirit. They got another spirit, so they're going crazy. Amen. Now we're trying to help them to get away from Amen. Be delivered. Amen. So, again... So let me close with this. The scripture says, but ye shall receive power. Mm -hmm. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. The Lord wants you to be a witness. Yes. I can't be doing that. I'm not a preacher. Be a witness. Amen. I'm not a preacher. Be a witness. Yes. I'm not a evangelist. Be a witness. Yes. Open your mouth. Tell somebody what God has done for you. Amen. Have he brought you out? Amen. Tell Thank somebody. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Another scripture says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Yes. You're not to be walking around in fear, scared of everybody and everything going on. God said, I give you peace. Amen. If you don't have peace, you're still shaking in your boots. Find the altar. Hallelujah. And stay in his presence Amen. until God moves that fear. Amen. You're not glorifying God, walking around in fear, scared what the devil's going to do. Amen. The Lord said, I give you fear. I give you, the devil's a lie. I give you peace. Peace. Peace I give you. Yes, yes. Not like the world gives you. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace be unto you. Thank you, Jesus. As my Father has sent me, mm -hmm. even so send I you. Are you going? Are you willing to go? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, ain't nobody invited me speaking that food up here. It don't mean that. <laughs> Wherever you go, you can be a witness. Mm -hmm. You in, in places I never will go. I'm not invited. They're your friends. <laughs> Hello? But tell somebody about Jesus, what he did for you. Amen. You might go to events. I ain't saying nothing wrong with it, but don't look for me there. But, you know, you're going to meet people. Yeah. Talk. You talk, right? They're going to tell you about what happened in their life, whether you want to hear it or not. Amen. Child, you should have been there. Such, such, and you're like, man. Amen. And you are ashamed and embarrassed to talk about what God has done for you. Shame on you. This is my last scripture. For this message. It says, Ye have not chosen me. The Lord is talking. Yeah. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and or the scripture says that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name. He may give it you. Thank you, Jesus. You have the word to stand on. That's, that's John 15 16. If you didn't know it. 
Learn it. Meditate on it. Pray it. You have not chosen me. That's what the Lord said. And you thought you chose him. He said, I chose you. You were running for your life when God said, I chose you. <laughs> Isn't that something? He had done all of us that way. I mean, every person who was in a situation, God, so he chose you. He brought you in. And there's another place the Lord was talking. He said, you cannot come to the Father except by, by me. Amen. You can't come except by me. Jesus said that. Amen. And how people think they're going to make it without the, but without the Lord, I don't know. The, the devil is blind their eyes. Amen. In the years. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody when God, when God come on, say it. When God, when God put his authority, put his authority on your words. On your words. God bless you. Would you stand? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to pray just a minute, but let me say this. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to say thank God for our Facebook friends. Amen. We pray that you join us again on the next time. You're looking for a place to worship. We're 5419 Davis Mill Road here in Greensboro, North Carolina, in the Blessing God area. You come, we we'll make you feel welcome and right at home. May God bless you until the next time. Amen.